Yeah, like we have like you know how we have like the split state champs. Right. Like, I right. feel like the 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 SoCal or the the SoCal state crit champs should just be the state crit champs, and the NorCal road race champs needs to just be the NorCal or the California champs. Because Maybe we should do like playoffs, right? You have the winners, and then you have the top whatever, and you do a, a, a funnel race. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think we need to like do away with like the two state champs and just have like we just yeah. need one. And I think that's something that should be like okay, Legion makes a big deal out of that jersey, but it's cool and it, it like it like draws attention and like I know like yes. Rafa Rafa store like they were selling it on the Rafa store and it was getting bought like left and right. So like that's something that should be you know marketed like while we can like it's something like special and it can make it you know some more hype around racing welcome everybody to the between two wheels podcast today's show got a great guest for you tyler williams the uh, legion of la star namesake of the williams is he one of the actual Williams brothers? We're going to find that out. Tyler, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me. Is there any rumor that you are one of the Williams bro- brothers? Yeah, but, well, it's a, it's a fun rumor that I'm playing with. I'm like the, the long lost brother. <laughs> long lost brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, look, I appreciate you coming and joining it. Look, I'm trying to do a bunch of interviews just because we're cramped inside. Um, sure. I don't know what you're doing. What's What's your coronavirus outlet right now? Uh, well, today I actually got to ride outside, so that was pretty nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a pretty big, like, it was a big bummer. Yeah, obviously, like, most of the big races were just getting ready to start, and it was, like, kind of like the time of the season where I was preparing to actually be good. Uh, so it was, like, all that winter's work kind of for these, like, two or three months coming in now are probably not going to happen. So that was a bummer. But now I had, like, a week of, like, kind of pitying on myself and then starting to get back into training. Right. So, so you did some outside today. I mean, look, yeah. we just, we just got a notice here in Sacramento County. You're which County are you in? Sonoma. Sonoma. So okay. we're are they similar on, to us. Yeah. We're on like the shelter in place, but we can right. exercise outside. So yeah, same here. They said going into tonight, it's supposed to be, and this is the, uh, the 19th uh, Thursday, um, shutting basically everything down. Um, I think they said you can exercise, you know, vital, gas and some other things but um other than that uh, i think yeah. it's safe you tell me i think it's safe uh, going out and riding your bike maybe not with a group but um seems like one of the safest things to do yeah i think it's as long as you're being responsible about it and not like yeah in a big group and helping contribute to like the spread of the virus and why why shouldn't you be able to go outside i think it's healthy for everyone and everyone would be going crazy if not <laughs> yeah I, i've got four kids and we're we're doing everything we can yeah. to try to alleviate the process. How about you? A yeah. Family? You married? Kids? What's the? the I'm, I'm right? married. My wife is a nurse, so she's okay. busy right now. Wow. Uh, and then she's pregnant also. So okay. uh, yeah, that's coming in October around oh. the sun. So I'm oh. pretty excited about that. Yeah. Congratulations. So is she yeah, being? Un- is she working right now? I mean, I don't know what the the issue yeah. of uh, being pregnant and being a nurse. No, she's still working, but that's kind of like the the interesting and not like great side of this whole thing is like what the hospitals and the hospital staff are having to deal with uh regarding like the virus and their own protection and obviously now that she's pregnant that's a bigger concern for us especially but uh yeah no she's still going to work and uh i don't know if they have any coronavirus patients at their hospital yet but i'm sure it's coming gotcha so look a few years ago i noticed you well a few years ago i noticed you were back in town and Mm -hmm. so i thought hey this is at some point, there's someone I, I do need to talk to. So you, why don't you give us a, a little un, understanding? Um, you had raced, uh, grown up in NorCal, raced here, looked like you had started off Cat 5, done your whole thing, then got the big time, uh, but then you're coming back. So yeah. why don't you tell us, maybe start with what happened with uh, Israel Cycling Academy to bring you back here, and then we can talk about some of the great exploits you've done. Sure. So yeah, uh, in 2018 was my end of my Neo Pro contract. So when you s- turn pro, you have two years or turn Pro Continental or World Tour, you get a two-year contract. Um, and that was the end of the second year. And yeah, the team was kind of going in, move, just moving in a different direction. They were they were growing quite rapidly. Obviously, now they're World Tour, so right. uh, they they were kind of trying to sign at the at the time they were trying to get into the tour uh on on invite so then like they were trying to sign french riders and stuff like that and 
there was just really there just wasn't going to be room for uh, an American anymore. They didn't have a, a need for it. Um, so yeah, they they retained like a couple of the Canadian guys instead, and and uh, some of the other guys, and a few of us got let go, and that was kind of that was it. It was it was just yeah, it wasn't handled in in my opinion like the best best way, and I was definitely like very disappointed in in the situation, but. Um, at the same time, you know, it's, that's the business of cycling. It's, right. it's a privilege to be at that level and, you know, not everyone gets to stay there for very long. So it was disappointing. Um, I felt like I had a lot more to, to learn and to keep improving and I was capable of it, but you know, it, I wasn't given the opportunity. So at the same time, I just had to make the most of it and moved on. So, so what's the plan now? I mean, obviously you're still right. You came back, you were racing a little bit with, uh, Cal last year, I think, um, now with Legion of LA, is that the plan to just kind of domestic, I mean, assuming we're going to have a cycling season or a future at all, but, um, you know, is that the plan just to kind of do the domestic thing or to get back to world tour? What's the, what's the ultimate goal here? Yeah. So last I was really burnt out at the end of 2018 and, but at the same time I was especially just disappointed in the, in the domestic scene. Also, uh, I wasn't given any opportunity domestically at all. Um, I think I had spent so much of my, my career in Europe and I hadn't really nurtured any of the relationships stateside just because I hadn't been here to develop anything. So, um, you know, a lot of the teams operate is they don't see you at the races. They right. you don't really, it doesn't matter what races you've done. They don't really care. So, uh, yeah. So last year I was I obviously still like training and racing and riding. So I was like, well, I'll just race and, um, kind of just have some fun with it and uh i started going to school and kind of preparing for what's next after cycling but then yeah i was racing basically just independently uh, i did redlands with team california which was well besides there was obviously a big tragedy with tate but um outside right. of that, i right. had a very good time uh i had a great time with those guys and they're all super people um and then yeah then the legion thing kind of started to happen at the end of last year i guess rode with them at boise and Santa Fe, and uh, I had such yeah. a, I, had, I had such an amazing time with those guys, and and I fit in super well, and I've known the whole team since I started cycling. So, like, I kind of had started racing with them, moved on to what I was doing, and now kind of came full circle back. And yeah, my plan now is just to help them kind of grow. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't want to never go back to that level. That level is so hard to sustain, both physically and also just mentally the strain that it takes to be at the world tour and pro continental level in Europe. Uh, it's a high demand on, on yourself and your family. So it's not something I necessarily am like striving to get back to. Uh, I think that there's a big potential with Legion to kind of do something different and I get to have a lot more say in my, in my life. So that's kind of important to me. So I hope to, you know, help them build a program. You had been on uh, the BMC development team, is that correct? Uh, with yeah. action, and then you okay. So you you made an interesting comment that your rapid growth and getting to go over and race in Europe actually has hindered you, I guess, for your own ability to get a team back in the uh, on the domestic scene. Is that kind of the yeah. truth? Then? No, I would say I think it definitely had a big factor to play in it. Um, I was I was kind of like fast tracked to that like European European style. BMC was. Okay, it's an American team, but that was very European situation. Yeah. Uh, even when I was with Action the last year of U twenty threes, I was very I was racing in Europe almost the entire time. Um, so yeah, and that was always like my my objective was to be in the European, uh, you know, in the big European races, and and that was like you know also you're like kind of I guess uh, conditioned to think that that's where you need to be. Right, right, and it, and it is at this moment like those are the races that you want to be doing. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was just focused on, on getting there and, um, yeah, I think it did hinder like, you know, when, when the bottom kind of fell out and also to be fair, that was a really rough year with cycling just in general, domestically, we lost a lot of teams. That was when Joey Belly was right. changing and he and Cappy went from, um, pro continental down to continental again. And, and it was just, yeah, it was, I mean, it's hard domestically. There's not really any spots anyways. At the same time, you know, the, the silver lining was I ended up with Legion and, uh, you know, I took a year off, but I, at the same time, or a year, a year off, I, uh, I kind of, <laughs> I, I found a lot of the parts that I'd kind of like 
lost as far as like the racing uh, mentality. I've kind of fell back in love with that spot, that part of it and like trying to win races because basically for my entire career, I was working for other guys. I was never riding the, the end of a race. I was, my job was done at least 5k to go. So I last year had to like kind of relearn how to win races again. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And now I can kind of take that skill set to Legion where I, some races I will be the leader. Some races I'm working for Corey and Justin or the GC guy or, you know, or I'm the GC guy. So I think it did make me a, a more complete rider. What is your skill set specifically? I mean, when you race, especially in the, in NorCal, you just being strong, you can almost do anything. Um, right. But what is your specific skill set um, in the overall scheme of things? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's like some. It's like a, a weird thing for me because I think that's a, been a little bit of like a an issue for me throughout my career. Is like, what am I really good at? I'm like mm. almost kind of mediocre at everything and not really good at anything. Uh, I would say, kind of in the last like year, I mean, I was always a good classics rider. I was built for that. I'm not. I'm not super big, so like it was weird i was always like the smallest guy in the big classics and i was like the biggest guy in any hilly race hmm. uh when i was when i was racing in like the the bigger stuff so i think now i mean i really am good at lead outs and like and like being like that kind of last guy for Corey and justin and the crits has like been a really good uh fit for me um i have the power to like kind of snap it up but i can also do like if i have the sun i did the whole last lap uh because we kind of uh overshot our lead out so i can kind of comp like i can do what i need to do to kind of like make sure i protect those guys so that's a good role for me and then yeah i mean i like like the hard the hard hilly races or windy or i need it to be hard the hard races i'm good in i can't so, really climb do it the best but i can do everything else do you, do you think your time over in europe has kind of helped you for being this pilot lead out guy for the crits uh, being able to, Hey, I, I could get in there. I can mix it up and it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'm not just a climber guy that maybe wants to sit on the back. Yeah. Yeah. I think it has. Um, I think those races are so aggressive that I had never really, the first big like national crit or big crit I'd ever done was Boise actually like mm. in my life. So I didn't really know what to expect going into that. And like the, like Corey and Justin give me a hard time. Cause like, I, I get scared compared to those guys still. Uh, they, they'll laugh at me. They'll, be, they'll yell at me just like stop hitting the brakes and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but I think it, it definitely has because even though the crits are crazy, it's nothing like it's nothing like going into a cobble section and head noise flat or something like that is that is a whole nother level of war. So uh, the crits are, especially my role in it, is super straightforward and actually probably fairly safe because I'm either on the front or I'm getting out of the way. Um, which is kind of how I like it. So a lot of people may know you for uh, winning Snelling this year. Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, thank you. But yeah. maybe they don't know that you got second place in uh, the Spa uh, Perry Robay, what, 2014, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, my claim to fame. But yeah. It is. And, and I actually, let me pull this. Um, so Mike Tunison won it that year. Mm -hmm. I mean, people may remember him winning a stage, what, stage one or two of the tour this last year, wearing the yellow jersey. Yep. There's a there's a yeah. list if they go through this that's uh, pretty impressive. How how did that race shake out for you? Um, that was man, what a day that was. Uh, I mean that first of all, let's just say Perry Robay and your top three. I don't care whatever happens in your life, even though it's just a spa. That's that's something you can hang your hat on forever. Yeah, you know, I was always good at riding cobbles. Even when I went over as a junior, it was like something that I like excelled at. I don't, I have no idea why. Uh, I'm not like built as like, oh, obviously he rides good on cobbles, mm. but it was always something that I, I enjoyed doing and I was always fairly good at. Um, and Roubaix is just like the weirdest. It's like, it's, it's just an interesting race the way it plays out. I, it's hard to even describe. It's just different than any other race you'll ever do. I have a feeling it's something like what like the big gravel races are like, where you just end up riding hard for as long as you can and you're in a group and then you're in a different group and then you're just like kind of always just like trying – you're just going hard. Uh, so that kind of suited me. But, yeah, we ended up in a big um, breakaway like of like 20-something guys pretty early on um, just before the first cobble sections. And um, we had Stefan Kuhn 
who's on FBJ now yeah. in our team was with BMC. And who else was the leaders? Uh, Ignacio Moser, Francisco Moser's son. Uh, so we had like, those were kind of like the protected guys. And then I just kind of ended up in the breakaway with my teammate. Um, who are you, who are you just, with then? Because I'm looking at the results. It doesn't have I was your with team BMC. Name. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was with BMC. Um, and like Logan Owen was in that breakaway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was, it, was a, it was a good move. And, and we had like, we got like two and a half, three minutes. And it kind of just sat there all day. Uh, and then at one point, right before Mons and Pavel, so like 60 Ks to go, um, there were, so we started like attacking each other. And it was just kind of, I don't really know what caused the attacking to start because uh, it had been working fine up until then. And like we went through a feed zone and then it kind of all like just broke down. And um, we went through like a little town. And it was, it was funny, I, like when Sagan won some years ago, he did like a similar move like through this town where he like kind of seated accelerated uh and then like you get two two corners through and you're out of sight and that was kind of what happened with me was uh, we were like trying to like get cooperation again in the group and then someone just let my wheel go and i looked back and i saw it and i went around the corner and then i just like punched it hard out and then i was alone uh, and then i did one or two sectors alone and then tunisian came to me and then um and then my teammate came to me. So then we were with three in the front. And then we sat at like a minute uh, for a long time. And then in the end, Tunisian just uh, went full gas on um, Carford Alarba. And just in the corner, he was like cyclocross world champion at the time. And he just sent it through this corner like <laughs> twice as fast as me. And I was like on the limit. And he all he needed was like one meter. And that was it. And you know, I just could never close it again. And then I flatted on, on uh, the last like real section. Uh, Luckily, the car was, like, behind me because I was alone. Um, and, yeah, I rode all the way to the finish, like, the last, like, 20Ks solo um, and got to enter the velodrome alone in second. And, yeah, it was it was obviously disappointing because, man, I was missing, like, 1% that day. Uh, and up until, up until I got dropped, I thought I was going to win. I felt I was on a good day. Um, and then all of a sudden, he was just a lot stronger than I was uh, in that one section. But. Yeah, that was how it went, and uh, it was cool though. It was it was the coolest thing I've ever done in cycling. For sure. how, how was the weather that day? Was it good? It was bad, hot. No, hot? it was hot. It was like really hot and dusty. Uh, I did mm. it like two years later with action, and it was actually a little bit rainy, which was a completely different experience. But also, like it was really neat because everyone's like off oh, urban rain, like right. It's like this fable <laughs> fabled thing. Well, we got to do it. U twenty three race happens in uh, the end of May or early June usually. So it's kind of a lot different weather than like the the proper ones, but um, yeah, we got some rain in, in that June. But this day was pretty hot, dusty. It was really dusty and sandy in a lot of the corners. Interesting, to also. The no I'm just looking through the list here. Uh, so you come in 115 back from Tunisian, and then 149. There's a a big gr group. So with your flat and everything, and being out 20k, that was pretty impressive. But uh, Tish Benut, I mean, there's some people I don't recognize in here, yeah. but Tish Benut, you know, he's uh, Mick Kung, um, I, Logan Owen. I mean, very impressive. So congrats yeah, to that. Yeah. This was, when did you start? Because I don't think you start, I'm just trying to look back and I did the peripheral research on you. Not not uh -huh. too much, but um, like 2011 or so is when you kind of got into cycling as a junior. Is that right? Uh, 2000, 2009, I started riding. Okay. Um, I'm actually from Bakersfield. So I okay. grew up in yeah. Bakersfield. And started racing in SoCal mostly, actually. Um, that was how I got to know Corey and Justin. And okay, so you've known them for, for quite then. a few years? From then, yeah. Yeah, like racing uh, industrial park crits was kind of how mm -hmm. it started. Um, and then in 2011, I joined Team Swift in yep. Santa Rosa. And that was kind of how my NorCal connection began. Um, yeah, so in 2011, I, I started on Team Swift and started coming up here to race and uh started with the national team in 2011 as well how, how did you feel about like it feels like right now our kind of cycling scene is diminishing to some extent you know people are doing gravel doing other things uh but back then i think imagine the junior scene was a little bit of a bigger prospect is that is that something to, is that correct yeah i think the junior scene in in my eyes got stay pretty involved with the juniors still i still help a lot with team swift and with Luke Lamperty, who I'm sure everyone in yeah. Cal knows is the next great cyclist. <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, like he's a really close friend. And um, so I like stay pretty connected within the juniors. I think that the junior scene is actually pretty strong. We didn't have teams like Lux and 
Hot Tubes has been doing their thing forever. Uh, Hot Tubes has always been a great team, and they continue to be. And, they're they're and more back, like this, back east though, right? New York right, yeah. area? Or? But they, they take the big talent from wherever in the country usually. Gotcha. Uh, I think they're more kind of East Coast based now than they used to be. Um, but yeah, there wasn't like the Lux back then, but there was like the Specialized Juniors and Team Swift, right. you know, is always kind of like, we, they'll, they'll be like me and then before me was Ryan Eastman. And there's always like a few guys. I think it, the junior scene is actually doing pretty good. And you can see that because... Maybe it's more top heavy now, mm. um, which is kind of disappointing. I think there's like less opportunity for like the the maybe less developed guys, but uh, the junior scene is strong. I think it's it's after that that we have like the bigger issue within within domestic cycling is after the juniors and maybe even a little bit after the U twenty threes. The you know that that strong like domestic scene. Like when I grew up, I'm like the first race I ever won was Merco. Uh, yeah. and Merc, you know, Merco stage race and, and like there when I won the junior race, but the pro race had, you know, like four continental teams there. Um, and they were like big continental teams that did, you know, all that stuff. And, and we just don't have that now. And that's sad. It is, but, um, kind of, uh, an interesting, uh, dynamic is I, what I think is, is Legion. They're, they're kind of taking the, you know, that you guys came up for Snelling, you show up for San Rafael and it's pretty Big solid. Gr- How many riders do you have on your team, as an example? Oh, that's a great question. I get that a lot, and I can never remember. I think it's like <laughs> around twelve. Right, because I've seen yeah. some of the races uh, where you guys almost look like you have every everybody in the same yeah. race. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is there an A or a B squad, or I mean, you know, you got to yeah. designate for certain races. I imagine there there definitely is like a, like a, you know like a like an A squad and a B squad, sure. And there's like an A crit squad versus the A. Uh, road racing stage race squad too so um yeah i mean that's justin's justin's goal is you know and justin Corey and and myself now like we all want to kind of create something that's that's just it's a it's a missing link in cycling in in north america and i hope that with that team that we can show like there's a different way to do it um they're you know obviously on it with like the social media right right. just like the 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 marketing and the content yeah the content and it's like even now like i hope that the team can show that it's sustainable even in these times where we're not racing because there is content to be put out still uh and like sponsors can still get seen with that stuff um even though we're not racing so i think that that's a big you know it's it's a break from like the old school of like well if we win races then we'll get sponsors like that model we've obviously seen does not work. There's no reason if that was the case, then HTC would never have been looking for a sponsor back in 2011. Right. Right. Um, well, you know, so. and, 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 and you guys are, look, you've got it. There's not everyone is um, prone to be uh, a social media star necessarily, but uh, myself included. Not, you're, you're, not you're not, no. no, but some people are, are really good at it. And I think the Williams brothers, um, they, they've, they've done really good videos, uh, they obviously, when you win races, you're going to have much better footage than not. So that helps, yeah. of course. And I, you know, I've, I've interviewed, uh, Justin, uh, Chico when he won uh-huh. and fantastic interview, you know, he, the, the comments he can make and, and very good. So very approachable, yeah. good guys. Uh, you're, you're not, you're no slouch as far as being able to communicate as well. So, uh, Hey, let's talk about your, your, uh, San Rafael, since we're just kind of on that, that was a very impressive, uh, finish you getting in the break. Cause no one expected that I could imagine that it's going to be you and your teammate and not one of the William, other Williams brothers yeah. kind of winning that race. Uh, sure. Talk to us about that a little bit. Um, yeah. So I kind of ended in the break a little bit because I was scared because man, that course yeah. is dark. It is dark right. and scary. Right. Um, and they were, we were joking about that after the race too. Like I was on the front, like the whole first, like 15 minutes of the race before the break went, because I just like, I was not about to be like further than like 10 guys back. Um, and then my kind of, my job was to follow Robin. I know Robin, we've raced together forever. We did national team and worlds together. Um, so, and I was like the one guy who like, okay, Tyler, you can handle Robin because you're at that level. Uh, so that was my goal. So I almost messed it up really badly. Cause I went for this like point or it was like a money, it was like a cash premium and I let it out and won. And then Robin countered over the top of me and I was like, Oh no, like, no, oh, this is going to hurt. And I was like, but this is my, this is my job, you know? And, uh, I was like, still like guest driving for the team. So I definitely didn't right. want to mess it up. Um, and then, yeah, so I 
you know, killed myself, got to Robin's wheel. And then, uh, you know, like guys kind of trickled across to where we had that group of like, I think it was seven, seven or eight, something like that. Um, and we just were in a very powerful position at that point because obviously we have the two fastest sprinters in the race. So we are fine to like, like we're fine for it to be a field sprint. Like that is what the team is built around and what they do. So like, that is actually like our plan A and we would rather that because that's where we have the best chance of winning. Um, so it like put us in a, those, the three of us that were in the break and I'm just a great position because we were like, we don't really have to ride yeah. um, at all. We would rather not ride even. So we didn't and uh, we didn't ride for like quite a while, um, which that's not my style of racing. I actually like can't stand doing that. I'm the first guy to like throw down and let's, let's go for it and best man win. Um, but obviously that was like the tactical and smart move for the team. So we sat in and Robin and uh, a couple other guys were like taking some big turns and Cooper rumbled, I think was Cooper rumbled. Yeah. 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 Thanks for, I was like yeah. spacing on his name. I wanted to give him credit because he was like really strong. That day. Right. Well, watching oh. that, that was the question watching it. It looked like he was, I, I'm not sure what his, his impetus was for, for doing so much work, but it seemed like he was, <laughs> he was doing a lot of it. He was, he definitely was making a deal mean, with Robin or something. I don't know for those guys. Like with Robin, like my attitude, my attitude about it was, okay, like we can be up here and you guys can get like second or third, or you can be back there and you're going to get 10th maybe. Right. Right. Good like, point. so that was kind of like my attitude about it. It's like, how do you, we're, we were in a good spot no matter what. So it's just like, where do you want to finish kind of thing? Um, and that's a very, like, very good position to be in. So we kind of just got to like play it how we wanted um eventually i did start like kind of riding at one point because it was actually a little bit easier to be in the rotation than it was just sitting on the back and having to like close the gap every couple seconds so you could kind of just like float through in the wheels and it was it was easier um but yeah and then i mean we we just knew that justin and Corey were going to handle business behind so we could kind of just key off of each other and um yeah we had diego and sean mcelroy uh right and with um, me was there um borstelman maybe was he I don't remember for um, Mark Pro or what are they? Yeah, now? there was who there was a Mark Pro guy. I don't remember who it was. Uh, I think Mark it was Pro him because he was riding yeah. pretty strong last year. And um, and then the guy that one was leading the USA Crits uh, series too. Um, yeah, so I mean, it was a, it was a, obviously it was the strongest guys in the race were in the yeah, yeah. in the in the breakaway. Uh, so it was yeah, it was it was just a big it was a big move for us to have three guys because we were in just like a really great position with that. We didn't have to do anything. We could kind of play how we wanted. Um, and we knew that behind business was going to get taken care of. So um, yeah. And then with like, we didn't really talk the three of us very much uh, until like three, three to go. And then I kind of drifted back. I was like, all right guys, like, so what are we, what are we going to do here? <laughs> and we kind of just like formulated a plan that Diego would jump into one to go into the top two corner and then um, me and Sean, in theory, were going to be in his wheel. Uh, and that didn't exactly go to plan because then Robin got Diego's wheel. And he kind of – Diego jumped a little bit sooner than I expected him to. So I ended up being third wheel or fourth wheel, I guess. I was behind Sean. Sean was on Robin's wheel. And then Diego pulled off uh, just coming out of turn four. And Robin actually went on the outside of him. So <laughs> Diego just kind of like took him out to the barriers because that was the line. Yeah. And we just kind of came inside, and then Sean and I just sprinted, and uh, that was kind of how it finished. Um, now, so being a guest rider, did you did you know the skills of these other of, of Sean and Diego as far as hey, who's going to be the strongest for this, or did it just kind of you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I know I've known those guys for for a while. Like I remember Sean and Diego both from when they were juniors. Um, mm -hmm. Diego's not that much younger than me. Sean's Sean's a bit younger than me, but I I knew them both. Um, and that's a, like the great part of the team is everyone. There's not really much ego. That's like everyone knows kind of like where they where they're where they're at in, in the line. Um, I slotted in when I went to Boise before in front of Justin and Corey. That wasn't like the original plan, but then I think they they trusted me to obviously I know what I'm doing, and yep. then um, they know they saw that like I have the power to be in that spot. Um, Sean's super fast, so like we were kind of interchangeable and Sean was faster than me that day. 
like I, there was no way I was coming around and out of that corner. So it worked out. Like I think either one of us could have won it. Just whoever came out of that corner first uh, was going to win. So um, we just, and Diego, Diego was the first one to be like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And so the communication was really good, even though it was, it was brief. Did you, um, did you have a, a, an idea that you were going to connect with them for this year at the, I know you were gush riding there. Did that solidify it? Um, did it help? Did it obviously, yeah, that's, you made so, it that's a, solid, that solidified it. I mean, it, we were kind of already thinking it after Boise. Um, after that, that was, I went to specialize with them like the day before and kind of hung out with them a bit, um, the day before San Rafael. And, uh, but yeah, that was kind of like in the cards the whole time. It was like, kind of like where I was like, all right, this is kind of where I want to be for next year. Um, I had like a lot of fun and I thought that that would be, you know, just the most healthy situation for me to be in and the best, you know, prospects as far as long-term goals go as well. Yeah. A good job hitching your, yourself to their wagon. Um, yeah. The uh, so that that race, like you said, it could be a little dangerous, especially that last corner. Um, mm-hmm. Was that the? And I know they had some construction on that top side that year. Yeah. Um, was <laughs> was there any danger in the break, or did you just feel like, hey, we're we're free and clear? And, and is night riding tough for you? I mean, is that a, a problem or not really? Just the crits in general. Um, that one is just really dark, especially in that back side. The back side of the course is very very dark. The front side's absolutely fine, like where the finish is and everything. There's right. so many lights, but the you know the top like turn two and turn three is just you can't really see you can't see much. Yeah, you have guys coming underneath of you, especially in, in the group that you're just like all of a sudden like they're they're there, um, and you just don't you just didn't even get a chance to react. So yeah, I mean, it's just like a it's just a tricky course. I don't think it's the night crits. I mean, I've only, okay, I've only done two, so I don't have a ton of experience with this, but Boise, the um, other one is that Boise was the only other one. And man, what a blast of a race that was. It was, it was unbelievably fun. Um, so, I mean, I think the atmosphere of them is amazing. Uh, yeah. Is there maybe a little bit more in danger? Like you could argue that, but like, especially the backside of San Rafael is obviously, okay. We could use some lights back there, but outside <laughs> of that, I think, uh, right. I think I think besides that, like that's just like kind of the nature of the course. It's got a downhill corner in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Boise, I think they put out a uh, the Williams put out a video because uh, Justin won that. Is it, is that correct? Mm-hmm. I remember. Mm-hmm. And there yeah. seemed like it was a good breakdown of using the riders um, and kind of you know the way he 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 came off of certain people's wheel. I imagine you were one of them that he was because you, were you the last one to lead into the last, second to last corner or yes. You remember that? Yeah. Okay. I, I did the, I did the back straightaway into turn three. All right. So maybe on this, I'll, li- I'll put a link up here and people can check out that video. Yeah. That's it's cool it's really it's instructive. Yeah. It's, it's really instructive on um, Justin like, breaking down how he's going wide or his teammate in front of him and just pushes the, the guy that tries to get in in between pushes them mm-hmm. into the barrier and closes it out. And then pretty spectacular. Yeah, it also helps when you're Justin and you like do like 2,000 watts in a sprint. Right? That's kind of a little bit <laughs> right. of a bonus. Right, right. Um, so before you were with Legion, that year you had the the gray jersey on, you were racing kind of by yourself. Mm-hmm. Was that yeah. – and you did well at Chico. How was that whole, did. The whole, whole year for you? Was it uh, kind of just – look, I just – I used to – I was on Israel Cycling Academy. I was a big time, and now I'm racing in a gray jersey. Um, what's – did you feel lost? Was it uh, okay? How, how was that season? It was, in some ways, it was like the most rewarding season I've had. Um, just because, like, I think there's like perception of, and, and it's probably a true perception that a lot of guys who come from like the European racing and European teams like have this ego. And I think that that might have gotten cast on me just by association. Uh, so that was like kind of the whole, well, I, okay. I should give some credit because the black bibs, um, they, you know, I had talked with them. I was like a fan of like their clothing and kind of what they were doing. And so they like hooked me up with some kit and I just liked, I thought the gray, the gray Jersey was like a nice, uh, like touch of like, look, I don't like, no one's paying for me to be here. I'm paying right. on here on my own dime. Um, so I'm not advertising for anyone for free. Um, and uh also just like you know like it was a little bit fun because people didn't know who i was straight away 
Right. Uh, like I remember I did cherry pie was the first like great, great Jersey race and took everyone like a second. Like I was in a breakaway and then came back. I think Luke, Luke went pretty chased me down. Um, and, uh, like everyone's like, Oh, that's who that is. And I was like, so it was a little bit fun to have like the little bit of surprise for like however brief it was. Um, but yeah, then outside of that, it was just like, I didn't want to have that perception that like, Oh, well, if I'm not in the world tour or I'm not in these big, you know, classics or these big races in Europe, like I'm not going to race bikes anymore. And that's not why I was ever in cycling. Obviously it was a privilege and like a luxury to get to do that for my career. But I like racing bikes and, and riding bikes. And so that was kind of like the whole point of the great Jersey was just to be like, look, I'm going to come out here and race hard and I don't need to have a team to do this or I'll do it myself. Um, well, I, I saw you at cherry pie. I, I remember watching yeah. that and going, wait, they're like Tyler Williams. And I was like, what? And I made the connection. And then, uh, mm-hmm. did you get in a break with uh, the Mike's bikes and he won the Skinner? I think is that how that? No, nah, so they countered. Back? They countered my my attack. I was like alone for like middle twenty minutes of the race, and then they okay. they they attacked me, and then we kind of like looked at each other, and then I I hit them. I hit like the group with like one to go, and thought I might be able to bridge it, but it was like fifteen seconds. Okay, and I thought if they looked at each other, there's two guys in the front. I thought if they played any games, I could get there. And maybe jump them and have a chance, uh, and then yeah, they didn't play games. So that's um, Bobby, I think it was Bobby Terra and and Skinner in a break. Maybe mm-hmm. that's what it was. So, but you 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 stayed in between, right? Yeah, I was third. Yeah, yeah. Great, great jersey comes through. So yeah, so no, and the great jersey was I don't know. It was a fun fun thing for me. Like, and that whole experience of last year, like it proved to myself that I know that I was doing the right thing uh, by racing still, and like that was what I loved to do. Um, and I hope it just like kind of like what I also hope it did was show that like not everyone who's racing in Europe does it for the money or because like of the prestige, but like we do it because we love racing. Um, right. And it doesn't matter what race I'm at, like I'm going to race hard. And so that was kind of like the, the motto behind my gray jersey, I guess. Well, and as you said, you still work with the juniors. That's a great philosophy and a motivation for them. I mean, because – not everyone is going to, you know, cat up and not everyone's going to be able to race in Europe and get second in, in Perry Robay. So, sure. uh, you know, you've got it. And look, I race in the masters and there's a lot of guys that take it, I think, way too seriously for what we do. And, yeah. um, so good on you for real making that realization. I mean, we just had, you know, um, Taylor Finney, you know, decides uh-huh. he's going to quit. And it just seemed like the last year or so, he has no interest in bike racing. I, I'm totally reading into this, of course, from my perspective. No, I, I think you're, you're pretty accurate with that. Okay. Yeah. And so yeah. And, and so just to have, I mean, I'm still I'm 48. I'm still racing. And I just love it. You know, I'm going out and riding. And, 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 and that's good for you. That's something that's sad to me is, is and there's a lot of guys that do just like shut it down after having like either their career kind of like cut short early or yeah. for whatever reason, they just like get off bikes and don't touch a bike again. Those like the most talented guys, like that happens to them all the time. Um, that's sad to me, right? But and like I understand it, but it it just for for me it's sad because like we need to have this like grassroots in the sport, and that's like where Team Swift especially does a great job. Is yeah, is there going to be world champions coming off of Team Swift? Like probably not. Like to be honest, we're not. Right. They, she Laura Laura doesn't com- um, recruit like the best riders around the country. But does she like give a lot back to the cycling community of Northern California? Absolutely. Because hopefully all these kids coming off of that team, the one thing they take away or two things they take away is they enjoy riding their bike and racing and they have like a work ethic and know how to like just work together as a team and they can bring that into society. Um, And hopefully, you know, like developing that keeps the cycling culture strong in, uh, Yep. in in california because if if it's everyone's like world champion or bust well then there's not gonna be anyone buying bikes or right there's not, all these sponsors that invest money in cycling like they're not gonna what are they investing in right and and for those juniors uh you know there's sometimes you see the success is so strong on these kids like quickly right they immediately they're yeah, racing sure. the p12s and sometimes it happens to the point where i imagine when they get on a a, a big team They've never had to work for someone. So it's a different prospect and, and life is different. You may not always be the most successful. You might be in your little, you know, little circle and then reality mm-hmm. hits you. So uh, having that perspective and maybe just the love of cycling itself 
I mean, we've all seen those juniors that are, um, they're, they're into it. They're great. And then they hit 16, 18 and they just, you don't see them anymore. So and it gets hard. It gets it, hard. It gets hard. It yeah. just gets harder after right. that. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not an easy sport and it's not a sport that you rely on your natural ability. You know, at some right, point right. you have to, you have to do the work or, and at a point further than that, then you have to have both really working for you in order to survive. Right. Right. Um, you mentioned earlier a little concept about gravel. Uh, have you decided, or is there any interest in doing that? I mean, everyone's kind of yeah. interested in doing it. Have you done any of that before? Is that uh, on your, uh, no, like, I mean, I've done like, so I've done like, I did trail bro Leon, which is a 1.1 race in France. That is, okay. yeah. It was like, is like probably like the OG gravel race. I mean, right. that race is through farm fields and is crazy. Um, this yeah it is something i want to do um i like racing bikes so i'm terrible on a mountain bike like the worst but <laughs> i mean so if it's as long as it has drop handlebars i can kind of like do it do it so gravel is like a little bit i like road racing the most so i'm gonna keep yeah. doing that but it's not something that uh i'm not gonna like focus on gravel ever or i shouldn't say never but like it's not like gonna ever be a big priority for me but i am doing well if we get to do stuff, I'll do Kanza. Um, I got in and specialized is going to, and the team are going to support it. So I'll do Kanza. Wow. I was supposed to do Belgium off where I, hopefully I'll get to do it still. Um, I was going to do the sea otter gravel race. So yeah, there was like a few gravel, gravel races kind of in there for me. In theory, it should fit my, fit my skill set because it's like, you know, Roubaix ish. So it's right. good for me. So is Legion, getting a team for kansas or is it just specialized is kind of helping a few no because no, <laughs> no. i'd like to see um yeah no i joke with justin that we're gonna turn it into a gravel team he doesn't necessarily love that he's, um he that. <laughs> no he's i mean he's he's about his uh he's about his you know he has his, his plan for the team and um but no they i mean legion was just going to support i think there was going to be a couple of us that go um but it was you know specialized we we're going to help with the bike and Legion was going to pay for me to go out there and stuff. What, what is um, Justin and Legion's kind of idea for the team? Is it uh, the hand cappy idea where, you know, in a few years we're going to, you know, Europe and da da da, or is it just, no, kind of, yeah, um, I, I think that that's a death wish for a team right now. It's, right. You have to have so much money to do that and to really get the return on investment for sponsors. You have to be in the, in the sport of France. Um, or doing those races and to get there, it's, it's very difficult. So, um, no, Justin has, Justin has a very like different perspective for the team. I think he wants to, he wants to like kind of make cycling his own. If you ever talk to Justin, he's like, he's got big ideas. Um, yeah. and, uh, he sees, he wants to make cycling sustainable in America. And by doing that, he's going to have to, you obviously have to change the business model for America. So that is why the team is kind of focusing on crit still. Yeah, we're going to do road racing, but crits have a home in, in the U S and that's because we, we appreciate like that fast paced kind of sport. Um, it's one hour, you know, one hour, 15, you see people every two minutes max. Like, so that kind of model is more sustainable in the U S um, along with that, you know, having like the bit of like, I guess, attitude you could say, or like, just like a different culture in the team, I think it makes it more relatable to people who aren't just like brought up within cycling and like this niche little, uh, demographic of like the, the, the country. So hopefully it can kind of like cross over within some sports and within different, you know, cultures and like hopefully bring more people to like, oh, this is crit racing. It's not five hours through France or five hours through even like tour of California, like did anyone ever watch like the whole stage? Like, <laughs> no, it Maybe. got boring after a while. Right. Well, I mean, I did. I'll okay. I watched. You, you know, there's hardcores that did. Yeah. And I, I'm one of them at right. the same time. I can understand that most people don't. Right. And what I want to help contribute to is making sure bike racing survives in the U S and can be like a home for guys like me and, who like love racing and are okay. We're not in Europe and we don't want to be away from our families for 
10 months a year anymore, but like we can still do it and like make a living at it and create a product that's, you know, appealing to people. So that's kind of Justin's goal for the team. Um, you know, he wants to start more teams essentially, and then kind of build from there. So it's like very lofty and I'm, you know, very like excited to help him do that. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Um, I had a question here and now just to slip my mind, um, USA crits, that's what it was. USA crits. Is that, is that, I think that's really beneficial to you know, the team model. I mean, it kind of came about the same time that these guys are, are mm -hmm. pushing up their thing. So, um, it seems like kind of a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. It's, it's definitely like a start in the right direction. Um, yeah, there's obviously like room to be room for improvement, especially like within like the calendar and like kind of making it all mesh. Mm -hmm. um but you, they're definitely like doing it a little bit better than it's been done in the past um i'm not like i've only done two so i don't really know the business end of it so well right um to really like speak on it in depth that's a question for like a guy like justin who has like his own ideas and then like versus usa crits what's the difference um but i definitely like appreciate what usa crits is doing because they're they're trying to like at least make this easier for the teams right? and give some like, like the videos and, and the live feed and stuff like that, like making it more appealing to people. What's your, um, what's your hope for Northern California? Well, let me ask you this. Let's go back. So you do Snelling, you do it with Legion and some mm -hmm. people, I think Jeff Linder had put something out. Hey, big battle, NorCal, SoCal. Yeah. Now you win it. You're from NorCal, sure. but you're riding on a SoCal team. Who takes the prize? What? What? Who won that? NorCal or SoCal? <laughs> I think Sonoma County won that. Okay, because we were we were one. <laughs> that's two, true. Three. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, hey, you you had a kind of a point at the finish. Was this was this animosity? Was this uh, what was nah. your, your your finish line post up there? Uh, yeah, I know. It looks like I'm punching Luke in the face. No, right. Like obviously that that meant a lot to me just because I train with Luke and Sam like all winter. Gotcha. I, like almost every day. So we're all like obviously Luke is destined to kind of be better than samurai <laughs> but um you know we have to like get our get our punches in now while we can right. because <clears throat> very shortly he's gonna be better than both of us but um no nah, so obviously a it was it was nice because i hadn't won yet this year um so i was like obviously very excited about that uh i do like love taking on all of mike's bikes um it was really fun to have like a couple of teammates like in that breakaway with me like Corey and, and lance uh, because normally it's me doing it alone. So to actually have backup was pretty cool. Um, but no, like it was emotion. Like I had some emotion with that race because like, I'm like I've done big races and that's, that was kind of my point. Like I, I want to race and I want to win. It doesn't yeah. really matter what the race is. Yeah. Uh, the Tuesday night twilight crit here in Santa Rosa is me, Sam and Luke just like throwing haymakers at each other for 45 minutes. So we have like a, you know, good friendship, but also like big rivalry. Yeah. So it was cool to like beat those guys in like one of the bigger NorCal races, you know, like heads up us going one, two, three. That was, that was, you know, very special and has been a lot of smack talk in some group messages since then. Oh, that's good. And nothing's better than um, being able to go to a race and having the big guy show up and not only have them show up, but like lay it down. Um, mm -hmm. even for the guys that just get spit out the back, I mean, that's still, it's, it's kind of a, it's a special thing. It's not like getting second at Perry Bay, but it's, it still means a lot. So. No. And I mean, everyone there like works hard to be there Yeah, and is there for, you know, their own, their own reasons, but all of them like unique and important. Um, and you know, like, I also think it's, it's great that like you have like a little bit of like, like a rivalry, like Mike Spikes versus me or Mike Spikes versus Legion or, you know, like I think everyone kind of wants to take a piece of Legion right now, you know, sure. like, and, but that's like, that's healthy. Like we, a, as a team, we want that because that means we're making some noise, right? B like the sport needs that because a, it's, it's a nice storyline and like, hopefully it can like pick up some steam, like even within like the national level of the sport. But like, I mean, hands down Northern California has the best road racing like in the country. Um, so, you know, like us coming up or those guys coming up and, you know, me bringing the road racing aspect to, to Legion a bit, like that helps the team and also shows like, look, NorCal is the best road racing around. Like, so, you know, like you have like two really good teams, Mike Spikes and us and then Luke and Sam showing up, like 
that shows the level's high. And winning races like that mean mean something because the level is high. So would you say that the uh, crit then is SoCal? Are they are they the best region for crit racing then? Yeah, I think it's in their culture a little more than us. Yeah. Um, I mean, you had like Rasan Bahati, and now yeah. you have Justin and Corey. Right. Uh, so I mean, they obviously have like some big hitters and have for a long time. So yeah, like we have like you know how we have like the split state champs. Right. Like, I right. feel like the 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 SoCal or the the SoCal state crit champs should just be the state crit champs, and the NorCal road race champs needs to just be the NorCal or the California champs. Because Maybe we should do like playoffs, right? Did the winners, and then you have the top whatever, and you do a, a, a funnel race. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think we need to like do away with like the two state champs and just have like we just yeah. need one. And I think that's something that should be like okay, Legion makes a big deal out of that jersey, but it's cool and it, it like it like draws attention and like I know like yes. Rafa Rafa yeah. store like they were selling it on the Rafa store and it was getting bought like left and right. So like that's something that should be you know marketed like while we can like it's something like special and it can make it you know some more hype around racing and everyone wants to like downplay like these races and it's like no let's hype them up like that's how you get the sport like the more hype around the sport the better like the more attitude the more um you know just like interaction between teams or some rivalries or something like let's make it interesting let's not just be like kind of like boring like the sport can get a little bit boring um as much as i love it like it is, you know, not like the most like out there. And uh, I think if you can get it a little more like out there, people it will appeal to more people and also just drive the sport along. Uh, right. I, I maybe that's why you see kind of a, a glomming onto Sagan with you know his antics, or exactly. even Taylor Finney when he was doing some mm-hmm. of his video, <laughs> videos and it's stuff. It's something. It's something yeah. different. Like right. like instead of just like like you know the the standard the standard interview or this just like the standard bike rider like it's a bit it's super robotic and like yeah it takes that kind of person to like really be at that level so right. of course that's kind of like the responses you get yeah but at the same time like if you can even just fabricate some some like interest besides like yeah i went i trained at altitude starved myself i got fast and now i won the tour de france like right like yeah hey that is incredible what those guys do but it's not helping the sport along and improve itself. No, but there's so many like boring type of people as you know, you're saying, and, and maybe it's, you know, look, you're interviewing them after a race, they're completely depleted. It may not be the best time for this. And Sagan's the only one that seems to put out some maybe crazy comments. So uh, yeah. maybe that's, maybe that's your ploy. You can, you can take on that role. Yeah. I mean, I'm not the most crazy guy, but <laughs> I mean, I definitely no. like, like the little rivalry we have in, in Sonoma County and, the rivalry that kind of started last year between like the gray Jersey and Mike spikes and hopefully like the Mike spikes versus Legion or Legion and Legion versus elevate things like that. Like, I think that that to the American culture is more relatable than like the tour de France yeah. and like a bunch yeah. of French dudes you never heard of. Right. So I think if we can build on that aspect of it, then, you know, hopefully we can make the sport a little more marketable and a little more sustainable for like teams across the board. Yeah, yeah, totally. It, so before we, we cut out here and talking about marketing yourself and stuff, what is, you, you said you're going back to school. So what's uh, what's your plan and kind of where you at if you want to talk about any of that? Yeah, so um, I'm going to race for as long as I can. Legion is supporting me in, a, in a really great way that I did not ever expect to be in a situation like this. Uh, if you'd asked me like 12 months ago if I would be where I am right now, I wouldn't have wouldn't have guessed it. So um very thankful for that and i'm going to continue to it's a it's like something that i can be passionate about and i see a future with so Good. i'll put 100 percent of my heart into that uh while the opportunity is there and then beyond that yeah i'm going to stay with school because that was like a big mistake of mine in the past i had time to do school even though i was racing a bunch like now in hindsight no i could have done like some online classes and been chipping away at it um right. i think it brings a little bit of balance to my life too so i'll try and keep chipping away at school as long as i can and and then uh i haven't really decided what i'm majoring yet because i'm just literally starting from scratch um <clears throat> but like yeah i mean i'll just keep doing that and keep racing for while i can and learn how to do that or race do do school and be a dad that's going to be very complicated but uh like another great challenge and i'm excited for it 
Yeah, it's amazing when you have, and, and just as someone, I went to law school later on in my life and suddenly, you know, kids and, and going doing that and working full time and you make it works. And sometimes you're just more focused about organizing yourself. So you got the job, you're racing your bike, you got a family and I think you'll do fine. So you no idea what yeah, you want to no, take, what you're going to major in or anything? Um, well, like I started off with like business and then, or like the idea of doing business. And then, then I was like, well, maybe I'll like get a little more specific and do like an econ degree. And cause I would like to teach maybe at some point, like after oh. cycling is done. Yeah. Um, I think that's something I would, I would like to do and be pretty good at. So, um, something I could like teach with probably, but also something that I can use with normal life hopefully as well. So, um, and then, yeah, just like using Legion to hopefully nurture more relationships in the business side of the sport too. I mean, if you, obviously if I could stay in the sport, that would be a goal of mine or in the industry. Um, it's something I've spent 10 plus years of my life now, like trying to become an expert in, uh, I think I'm getting pretty close to like being up there as far as like knowing the sport inside and out, um, being part of Legion kind of like a little bit now more in the running of the team. So I'm learning that kind of that side of it. And then, also like learning from Justin, the sponsorship marketing side of it. And Corey is like excellent at social media. So learning all of that and then starting to nurture my own relationships. Um, I haven't announced it yet, but like I'm working with Sonoma Creamery, um, which is a local company that make like cheese snacks. Yeah. And um, like it's the team Swift relationship that I've also, you know, nurtured into something more for myself and that I hope to build into something bigger. I think that they have a great line of products that can be crossed over into like an active lifestyle, um, you know, side of, it's not a cycling sponsor, but it's something that can cross, cross across the, the line. So, um, working with more companies like that local and like hopefully even a little bit bigger than that eventually. But I have, uh, yeah. So I have like a lot of things going on. Um, I'm really busy compared to how I used to be. But it's good. It's good. I'm well, learning a lot. Yeah, when your when your son comes, it's gonna it can increase oh, tenfold. Yes. So. yes, but it's gonna be. So, I'm so excited. It's gonna be great. No, it, it will be. Um, what was the plan for you season wise until coronavirus hit us? Um, what were the the next few races? And and I guess no one really knows what you're gonna be doing next because we don't know when we're gonna be able to get sure. outside officially. So, well, so yeah, I was gonna do the Piscenta road race and the Chico crit hopefully was kind of like going to be my next races. I just mm -hmm. done tour de Marietta in, yeah. in uh, down South. And then I was going to take like a couple of weeks to train. Cause I kind of like overdid it a bit in February. Um, so I was going to like chill out, train a bit and then do Piscenta as kind of like a tune up before big goal was Joe Martin, sea otter, redlands, Belgium off a ride. That was kind of like my first part of the year goal. And then after that was going to be Winston Salem, the UCI race in the crit. Mm -hmm. And then um, Kanza was the end of May. So that's still on, but I don't have like a ton of hope for that at the moment. Right. Um, and then, then from there was Pronats or Tulsa and Pronats. So uh, yeah, we'll see kind of like, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to like plan for anything at the moment. Um, so like once I found out like kind of like the next where I realized like the next like two months was going to be off, I kind of took last week, like com almost completely off for me. Like I barely trained. And then this week I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing some stuff because a, it like keeps me sane and be like, I want to be hot and ready when, when they, you know, let us out and let us race. Like it's going to be important to be like on it straight away. It's going to be an abbreviated season. So you can stay hot the whole time. I think now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, so yeah. one of one of my acquaintances, uh, Isaiah, he rides for your team. You mm -hmm. taking good care? You, you taking good care of him? Yeah, yeah. And how's he look for the year? He's, you know, he's doing great. Um, I know, like I've only raced with him a handful of times, uh, but I know, like in the in the SoCal races, he's been doing a great job, and he's like learning. He's learning a lot um, and improving all the time, and he's like very committed to improving, which is like the most important thing, is he wants to be better and wants to learn um and justin obviously really appreciates that so nice no, doing super job doing a really great job good good uh, anything you want to promote 
say anything else before we uh we head out of here? Well, I, I got my Sonoma Creamery <laughs> Sonoma Creamery plug in, so I'm really grateful to be working with them. <clears throat> um, no, I mean, I enjoy you know. I just want to say like I enjoy racing everyone in NorCal, um, like as much as like you know I love to go out there and just like try to kill because all of the you know all of the the hard racing that I do just know that it's like me making up for all the head kicking in that I've gotten over the last like six, seven years. <laughs> so if you think Chance that like, Oh, Tyler, Tyler doesn't know what he's doing to us. Like, no, I, I do because I've been on the receiving end of that more than I'd ever like to think about. Um, so, and so it's intentional. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, a little bit. I mean, I like to, it's more fun to be the hammer than the nail for sure. Right, so right. I, I try to take advantage of it now that I, I can, um, but no, I mean, I just am grateful for everyone that comes out to those races. I think it's important that we support the local races as much as we can, because, you know, no matter what, like everyone here likes race their bike and the more that we can, the more nice races we get to have, then, you know, it's, it's important for everybody. So I like to, you know, make sure that I'm also out there doing the local races when I can, because, you know, we can't just be like, like as Legion grows, I don't want to be kind of like forgetting like, you know, the, the grassroots of the sport, because that's where, that's where the most important people are. Yeah, no. And, and it, it obviously helps perpetuate the sport and, and everything involved. So, um, great to meet you. Great to uh, have you on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So if any, yeah. And, and, and people can find you on, uh, Instagram, I imagine. Instagram <clears throat> at TW cycling. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to up my Instagram game. I've been getting a lot of grief about it. I'm the least amount trying to of help followers on the team. Yep. So yeah, follow me on Instagram because I'm trying really hard. Um, I'm not that interesting, but I really try to be a little right. bit interesting. Uh, yeah. And then I'm on Twitter. My ha- handle is similar. I don't know if it's exactly the same. It's like GW, TJW cycling or something, but yeah, no. Um, yeah. That's how you find me. And hopefully I'll see people at races at some point in the next month. Yeah, thank you once again, and good luck, and uh, I hope everyone can get out yeah. and, uh, and do some racing. Thank you, thank you. Have a thank good you. day. You too. Bye.